This platform can turn your sketches into realistic renderings in top-notch quality. Hello and welcome back to the channel. We have been looking at a lot of AI platforms for architects and designers and today we will be looking at one such platform that can be used for rendering and modifying images. This platform is called archivenc.com and it's free to get started. I am Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. To begin with, you need to head over to the website and the link is provided in the description. With the free version, you can try up to 3 render output. It has a very simple interface and you can see all the features that this website is capable of. When you scroll down, you can see some of the outputs of this website. We will look at all of these tools in detail as we go further in this video. Another thing worth mentioning in this website is the payment plans. Firstly, this does not come with a subscription but only as a one-time payment. And looking at the pricing, it starts from just $10.00. In case you're a student or a professional and you want some quick renders in a really short span of time, you can simply go with the lowest plans which also comes with unlimited renders. To begin with, we'll have to log into the website and for that, we can use the Google account or Facebook account to log in. Once logged in, let's click generate and we're free to try out all these tools. Archivency comes with 6 tools that we can try out. The first tool is the exterior design AI. The interface of this rendering tool is extremely simple, making it easy for anyone to get started. As you see here, we have some very simple drop-down tools and selection buttons that can give us a very good quality of rendering. We'll need to begin by uploading an image in this rectangle right here. I have with me a SketchUp model that we can try rendering using Archivency. You can take a screenshot of it directly or also adjust the styles to see the building as outlines. I've also noticed that it's important to turn on the shadows on the 3D model so these rendering platforms can understand the volume of the building. Once done, you can export it as a 2D image. Let's head back to Archivency and upload the image in this tab. The render mode is already in exterior. Under input type, we have three options and this is obviously a 3D model screenshot. The next option is the similarity level and this determines how much of AI creativity that you want to apply into the rendering. The similar gives you the exact results from the image and the creative adds a bit of imagination using the power of AI. The balanced works on most cases. On the next tab, we have prompt option which says optional but I think it's pretty important to describe the prompt to get the right output that you want. The better you describe the prompt, the better the output will be. Some parameters of describing the prompt can be the type of building, the style, the textures, the elements that you have in the design, if the rendering is going to be a day scene or a night scene and so on. So these keywords that we use are pretty important in the output. On the next tab, we have negative prompt. So this basically means anything that you do not want to have in your rendering. The next tab shows the building type and when you scroll down, you can see that it has quite a variety of building types to choose from. For this one, let's go ahead with a residential house. The next tab is the render style and this again has a variety of options to choose from. It's quite important to choose the right style in this tab because this has a great level of reflection in your output. Let's go with the neo futurism for this building. Right below, we have the option called render performance and as the name suggests, we can adjust the slider on the left or right side for faster render or best quality render. On the last option, we have something called seed. I'll explain this further in a moment, but for now, let's simply type a random 9 digit number and copy it. Hit generate and the rendering will start. It takes about 40 to 50 seconds to generate the output. We have the results and this is a great quality of output. The AI has done a great job in retaining the volume of the building and also creating an environment. We have an option right below called upscale and once you click that, the images get upscaled by 4 times. Let's now zoom in and you can see the quality of textures on the building facade. That is definitely some great quality of output. Now comes a question. What if I have another view of the same model and I want to render it in the same rendering style as the first image? Fortunately, Archivency offers a solution for that. Let's now go back to the SketchUp model and export an image in another view. Now all we have to do is to remove the image from this browser and upload the second image. What is important here is the seed number that we previously did in the rendering. It does not matter even if you close this browser and open it again. You can simply use the same seed number that we previously used on a new render and AI will generate the same results again for you. Let's simply hit generate. That gives us the results of the second image in the same quality and render style as the previous one. Using this technique, we can render a model in any different angle and still follow the same style in the rendering. We can also try out the same exterior rendering using a sketch. I have with me a simple sketch of an elevation. So the drop down here needs to be in sketch. Let's describe the prompt, choose a building style, render style, render performance and click generate. Here's a comparison of the sketch and the rendering. 
This almost seems like a photorealistic image. Architects and designers can use this technique to quickly visualize their ideas and present them to their clients. And yet another amazing feature is that this works with photographs. I've uploaded an image of a partly constructed elevation and below we can choose the option of photo. Let's describe the prompt, building type and render style like we did previously and choose generate. This is definitely some stunning results and when we upscale this, this almost looks photorealistic. Here's a before and after comparison. What are your thoughts on the output? Now let's try the second tool which is the interior design AI. The settings and UI is exactly the same as what we saw previously. Let's upload an image and here I have a sketch of a living room. The render mode is already in interior and let's choose the input type as sketch. The similarity can be balanced and for the prompt, I'll be describing the style and elements of the interior. And right below under the room type, we have yet a lot of categories to choose from. Let's choose a living room. And for the render style, we again have a lot of options to choose from. Let's choose a style, adjust the render performance and hit generate. This took about 40 seconds and I was quite surprised with the output. Let's upscale it before we look further. And this is some stunning output. It almost looks like an actual photograph considering the lighting, textures and the quality. And since we have upscaled it by 4 times, we can zoom in and still see the textures on each of these elements. The lighting and contrast in the overall image is absolutely stunning. Similarly, we can adjust the parameters of the render settings and we'll be able to create multiple outputs in great quality like this. Now quite similarly, we can do the same using a screenshot from a SketchUp model. We have uploaded a similar screenshot here and let's type in the prompt for this accordingly. The render style can be plain elegance and let's hit generate when you're done. Here are some of the amazing outputs that were generated with Archimed CA. The lighting, reflections and the textures in the image are absolutely stunning. It does have a few little snags here and there, but considering the overall quality, this is an amazing output. The next one is the master plan AI tool. Once again, this has a similar setup as well. And for this, I will be uploading this simple line drawing of a master plan. For this example, I want to demonstrate how to produce a good result and what are the mistakes that produce a bad result. First comes the prompt. As we saw in the previous examples, writing the prompt is extremely important. We really need to describe what exactly we have in the master plan design. In this example, I have a villa with a tiled roof and the trees and vegetation is not exactly on the entire master plan. It's only located on the boundaries on the left and right side. So I would be describing that in the prompt as well. And as for the negative prompt, let's say we do not want to have small individual trees in the master plan. Let's hit generate and we see the results. Here we have exactly the same line drawing that we uploaded as the reference. The AI has not made too many changes with the design and it's almost exactly the same as we intended. The AI has done a great job in the overall depth of the building, plants, trees and the roads. Now I would like to show you how not to do this so that we don't make this mistake. Let's go back to the prompt and this time let's only type a modern villa, tile roof and a contour trees. And if you generate it without any negative prompt and proper description, this will be the result. This is obviously not what we want and what we intend in the design as well. So it's very important to understand that AI is only a tool and we need to configure the tool to get the best results out of it. So AI cannot magically deliver the best results without our interpretation. The next tool is called Furnished Room and as the name suggests, it's a pretty simple tool as well. We'll have to upload an image of an empty room. Let's describe the kind of furniture that you want in this room. Let's choose this as a living room and choose a design style. Hit generate and this will create furnished output in your empty room. It might change a few elements in the design here and there, but this tool can be used for conceptual design ideas and brainstorming. The next tool we have on the platform is called Modify Interior. Let's upload an interior image and using this tool, we can change specific parts of the image. When you scroll down, you have this option called In Paint. Choose In Paint and brush over the areas that you want to change. For example, let's brush over this right basket and change it into a side table. Right below, I've typed in as a side table in wood design. Let's choose a room style, design style and hit generate. And that will seamlessly change the specific part of the image into a new furniture. Here are some examples of how this tool can be used to change multiple parts of the element. The last tool on the platform is called Modify Architecture. Like previously that we saw for interiors, using this tool, we can modify specific elements in the architectural elevations. Let's upload an image of an exterior and we can maybe change a specific texture in the design. Let's scroll down to the InPaint tool and we'll just have to brush over the element. Click done and in the prompt category, we'll have to type in the prompt. I'm describing a wooden facade design. Click generate and here are some of the outputs that were generated using this tool. 
So that was it from the walkthrough of rkvnc.com. You can try it out for free from the link in the description. I hope you found this video to be helpful and if you did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.